Good morning, friends, and welcome to The Point. We are so grateful that you have made it a priority to be here today. No matter whether you're joining us in person or online, you couldn't have picked a better day to be here. It's been four short weeks since we joined together to celebrate the risen Christ on Easter Sunday. And just like the disciples, we can quickly lose sight of the power of the resurrection and become burdened by the cares of this world, losing our focus on the things that really matter. What was it that transformed the disciples from a group of fearful followers hiding out in a locked room into a fearless group of world changers determined to share the life-changing good news of Jesus? These guys were all in. Today, Pastor John begins a brand new series that explores the essentials of an all-in life through the Points Weekly Three, Worship, Connect, and Serve. This three-week series invites us to envision and experience what an all-in life with Jesus is all about. And today, we'll start with worship. There just might be more to it than you thought. What a great day for those of you who may be joining us for the first time. We are so glad you made that choice. We want to know that you are here. So would you do us a favor and send a quick hello text to 812-359-1799 This allows us to meet you and welcome you personally. I've got some exciting news for you, friends. Our Point Kids Summer Jam is a summer celebration big enough for the whole family. This three-night event will be jam-packed with music, games, and so much fun. Registration opens today, and to beat the summer heat, all the families registered in the month of May will be entered to win a Covenant's Corner gift card. So go register on the Point Kids page on the church website today. We can't wait to jam out with you all this summer. Summer Jam, like all the other ministry opportunities that point people to Jesus, is only possible through your financial partnership in this ministry. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. For those of you who are ready to join those who make ministry happen around here week in and week out, here are the ways to give. You can give on our website, go to thepoint.com, or text the point give on your mobile device to 888-364-4483. You can mail a check to 311 Meyer Street here in Seymour. If you're on site today, there are black boxes on the back wall that you can place your gift inside as you exit this morning. Our giving, our serving, our connections with others, our worship, our very lives are lived in response to what God has already done for us. But His great love for us compels Him to leave us with the choice. Will we be all in for Him? Good morning, everybody. Y'all noticed something a little different this morning, maybe, as you came in. Uh, We are excited about a new conversation uh, for the next three weeks. Uh, You heard us talk about the weekly three and what it means to be all in. I was reading this past week and just noticing over and over again how when Jesus encountered people, right, he always invited them to come follow him, but it was always an invitation to leave where they were and all the things that they'd known and were comfortable with and preferred about their life uh, to follow him somewhere new. Uh, And so we're going to receive that challenge this morning and and hear God invite us somewhere new today in thinking about what it means to live life all in with him. 
Uh, because o- over the centuries of human history, people have always been kind of living and wrestling with this tension of, as, of what it means to follow after God or give part of my life to God or not part of my life to God. And we want to enter in today and really challenge ourselves with the question, what does it mean to follow after Jesus with our whole lives? I love something about the point here that I've kind of discovered is this weekly three that we're going to be focusing on for the next three weeks. And today is all about what worship is. And so we thought we would just take everything away today, all the lights and all the fog machines and even the band and all that kind of stuff, and really enter in and say, what does it mean to come today to worship? What does worship mean for you? And so we're going to just have an experience together, and I want to invite you in the moments uh, throughout today where maybe you feel a little tension or you feel a little discomfort that you would just lean in and ask God how he might teach you, reveal to you, show you what it means to be a true worshiper today. So we're going to begin uh, with singing. Would that be okay? Why don't we stand on our feet this morning? Uh, We're going to sing about what the heart of worship is. And all the songs today are just intentional. I just invite you to ask the Lord uh, to show you what worship is all about to you. When the music fades and all is stripped away, I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things And it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, no one could express. How much you deserve Though I'm weak and poor All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required you search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm coming back I'm coming back I'm coming back to you I'm coming back, I'm coming back, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back, I'm coming back, I'm coming back to you. We're coming back, we're coming back, we're coming back to you. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. 
and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm coming back i'm coming back i'm coming back to you i'm coming back i'm coming back i'm coming back to you i'm coming back i'm coming back i'm coming back to you we're coming back we're coming back we're coming back to you
may be seated this morning. As we enter in, wasn't that good? Amen. To worship. Oh, man, I, I, um, I love music. I'm a, uh, I like to think I'm a worshiper, but there's been many times throughout my journey with Jesus where um, my love for music and my love for worship, um, sometimes the, the more I move in life, and I wonder if this happens to you, you, you kind of f- find yourself in places that you didn't realize you were. Has that ever happened to you in your faith journey? think things are good and worship is good and then I look up and I think man worship is a lot about me I was happening upon this story uh, from Francis Chan he's a pastor on the west coast and he had somebody come up to him uh, one week in worship and tell him I really just didn't enjoy worship today you ever thought that you go out of church and thought this is why I didn't enjoy it and like it and he said well it's good news because we weren't worshiping you <laughs> And I read that and I thought, oh my gosh, Lord, forgive me how often I come in uh, to my time of worship on Sundays. And even in that, uh, my time, my hour on Sunday where I worship and I leave thinking I got something from that. That was good. I enjoyed worship. But at the heart of worship is not about you or me. The scriptures tell us plain in John chapter 4. It says, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and truth. That there's something about our worship that is either true or not true. I think that's a bold challenge for us this morning. Is your worship true? Are you worshiping in spirit for what God calls us to? In the book of Hebrews, Paul says this, through Jesus, therefore... Let us continually offer to God, what? A sacrifice of praise. The fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And too often worship becomes about what I need, want, and prefer. What I need to get from God, how I need to feel today in worship. But true worship, and really what enters us into the outflow of true worship is a fulfillment and a receiving from God that we would never enter into if we don't deal first with our perspective about worship. Why are we here? Why do you worship? Because true worship is all about Him all the time. And as we begin this conversation this morning, I want to challenge you about your perspective and about my perspective. Is my worship all about him all the time? Is And is the outflow in my life beyond Sunday for an hour into my Mondays and throughout the week, my moments and minutes, is, is worship on my heart? Is it coming from my lips? Is it all about him? Not some of the time. Is it all about him all of the time? The psalmist expresses this reality. I love this. It says, not to us, Lord. And and he repeats it again. I I Remember, we learned this a couple weeks ago. When you see things repeat in the Bible, take notice. He says, not to us, Lord. Not to us. Says it twice. Not to us, not to us. But to your name be the glory. Because the deep challenge is when worship is about what I get, what I need, what I want, what I prefer then worship is about my glory, not his. It's perpetuating me and how I feel and my posture towards life. And God invites us to have the same heart as the psalmist, to confess today, Lord, not about us, not us, Lord, but to your name be glory because you are full of love and faithfulness and grace and mercy. And when our perspective shifts away from us towards him, all of a sudden what comes into view are things you might never have seen before. A new view of God's grace, a new view of God's mercy, a new view of God's love, a new view of God's challenge for your life. So as we enter into this next section of of worship, I wanna invite you to be challenged in your perspective. If you look under your seats right now, uh, in front of you, there's a little card with a pen. Everybody just look under there. Here's one of those moments I want you to lean in, okay? I want you to participate today, even if it makes you uncomfortable, it's not something you normally do in church. Well, today, let's let it be your normal, okay? So grab your card, and on on the card on the top is just a a confessional prayer. Because when our, our perspective is challenged, What we need in worship is to say, God, I've been worshiping me. I need to worship you. 
make my life about you, not me. And so there's a prayer there that as we sing the song, I want to invite you to use this space to pray, to maybe read that confessional prayer, or maybe you want to grab the pen and the Lord is just challenging your heart and you want to just write him a confessional prayer about your perspective in worship and about worship. Heavenly Father, I pray that as we continue to hear from you today, that your Holy Spirit would lead us and challenge our perspective today, that we might become true worshipers. Amen. moment in the chapel service at Olivet where I was singing a solo and the presence of God came upon me and up until that point I'd sang and I love singing but man that moment he spoke to me and that moment that presence was so real flowing through me and I never wanted to sing again for any other reason because his presence in my life is what keeps me going it what speaks to me it what fills me and I'm just so thankful that that I've given my life to him and that every day I seek that. I seek for that presence, that anointing um, to guide me, to lead me, whether I'm singing or not, um, just in everything that I do. And I'm caught up in your presence today, God. I just want to sit here at your feet. I lay it all down. Caught up in this holy moment, I want to be right here. And I never want to leave. There's no other place I'd rather be. Gone. Oh, and I'm not here for blessing, no more. Cause Jesus, you don't hold me. Just want you. And I just want you and nothing else. And nothing else. Nothing else will do. And I just want you. And nothing else. And nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. And nothing else. Only you, God. And nothing else. Oh, oh, oh. oh nothing, nothing else, else will do. I just want you. And nothing else.
worship you today. Oh God, we desire in our lives, God, you above all things. I'm so thankful for moments like, like this and moments in your word and in time in your presence that, that remind me over and over again that you are all that I need. And those times of conviction in my life, God, when, when you're not the priority that you should be, when you're not at the top of all of my lists and you're, you're God, you're not at the top of all of my worship. And so God, I come in moments like this and I confess that God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord, for, for sometimes the thing that I've made worship. I'm, I'm sorry, God, that sometimes for me, it's a job that sometimes leading worship is, is simply a job for me. I'm sorry, God, because you are worthy to be praised and adored and worshiped, whether it's my job or whether things are good or whether things are not. And so, God, come. Oh, God, we worship you and fill your people. And, and God, change us and convict us and lead us. Oh, God, in these moments. Caught up in and your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet And I'm caught up in this holy moment And I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for bliss Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Amen. Amen. He challenges our perspective today. But he also wants to invite us as we enter into a new perspective, when we see worship uh, through different eyes. That's our challenge today, that worship is all about him all the time, through all of our lives. The weekly three that we're going to be talking about, you're going to be hearing about all the time, invites us to this all-in way of life where worship extends beyond Sunday morning for an hour. What would happen if it was all about him all of the time in all of your life? And it invites us, and I love this about changing our perspective, because as we enter in as true worshipers and we start to proclaim who he is and we start to see who he is with new eyes, all of a sudden that spiritual reality starts to impact our physical lives. And I think that's one of the great mysteries of our faith is that God is spiritual. He is spirit in us, but he is also physically with us as his spirit invades us and he invites us to change our perspective and realign our posture towards him in life. And our posture is all about the way we're facing physically in life, the way we're moving physically in life. The scriptures invite us into this awareness that a worship isn't just a spiritual reality, it's a physical reality, something that draws a response from us. It says this in the scriptures, come let us, what? Bow down, Bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. There's something happens when we change our perspective that invites us into a new posture. It invites us to lay our lives down, but to physically, in many ways, in times of worship, to physically change the way we relate to God, our, our posture towards Him. So often in worship, I come and I just do what's comfortable for me. <laughs> you know, I, I stand and I, I'm a big guy. I like to, you know, do my motions. So for me, the challenge sometimes is to not be so big and free. It's to invite God and ask Him, God, how does my posture reflect what you're doing in my life? It goes on in Romans. The Apostle Paul says it like this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view, I love that, in view of God's mercy. So there's a new perspective. I see God's mercy that invites us to offer our bodies, our physical selves, as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is, I love this, this is your true and proper worship. And again, we've talked about this. Our perspective sometimes leads us away from true being true worshipers. And God invites us today through our posture 
to have a worship that is true and proper, that we engage with spiritually, but also invades our physical lives because worship is a physical response to a divine encounter. There is nothing about our time here together every Sunday and what God longs to have with you in your moments and minutes that is ordinary. There's nothing ordinary about it. God, the creator of all things, who spoke you into being with a word, who knows every human from across history who ever was, is, or will be. That, that God, the divine creator of all things, invades our present. And, he, and that evokes, or it should evoke a physical response from us to change our posture towards him. So we're gonna sing uh, some more songs here. And what I wanna invite you into is to engage in that physical response. Maybe for you, it's the challenge to not just stand with your arms crossed. <laughs> because if worship is about him and not you, it's not about anybody watching or thinking what you got going on or your insecurities today, but to say, Lord, in view of your mercy, how might I change my posture towards you today? So maybe for you, it means to stay seated. Maybe you want to come and kneel or lay face down on the floor or you want to stand and raise your arms or you want to, the challenge for me maybe is to sit and be a little still. <laughs> but our invitation today as we learn what it means to be worshipers is to allow God to challenge and invite us to offer ourselves physically to change our posture towards him in worship. Heavenly Father, I, I pray as we lean into what it means to surrender, to sacrifice, to give over, to give all, that you would give us an experience, an encounter with the things we know to be true. It's this collision of our head and hearts that you are here, God, and you want to change our posture towards you in view of your mercy, your grace, and your love. May it evoke a response from us because you made us that way to respond to you, to kneel before you, to shout in praise, to proclaim to all the world who you are. We do those things, our physical posture changes because of who you are and what you've done. So we surrender to you now that you might lead us to a new place in worship today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Here I am down on my knees again Surrendering all, surrendering all. So find me here, Lord, as you draw me near. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. Oh, I surrender. Sing this with me. To wrench my soul as mercy and grace unfold, a hunger and thirst, a hunger and thirst. And with arms stretched wide, I know that you hear my cry. Oh, speak to me now, yes, yeah. speak to me now, oh, I surrender, oh, I surrender, and I want to know you more, oh, I want to know you more, oh, I surrender oh I surrender and I want to know you more I want to know you Jesus breathe. 
surrender And I want to know you I want to know you I surrender I surrender I want to know you I want to know you fill this place you have filled this place lord <laughs> forgive me for not seeing that the truth that you're here i pray you'd move us lord out of our comfort out of our preference into somewhere new maybe just as a as you're praying now as a practice of changing your posture maybe just make a small move just a small move whatever that means for you maybe you want to stand up Maybe you want to come kneel. Maybe you want to bow your head and into your hands in your seat. Just, just make a small uh, move of posture as a way of saying, God, I'm open to you changing not just my spiritual life, but changing my physical life. God, we desperately need that in our lives today because too often we let you live in abstract places of our hearts and our minds and our lives never change. But God, we need a physical change today. I, I know in my life, I, I need a physical change. I need what you've told me in my heart to impact my life, God. I'm desperate for that. Lord, may we experience that change today in you. ground I'm standing on You're more real than the wind in my lungs Your thoughts define me You're inside you're my reality. Closer than the than the skin on my bones. You're closer than the, than the song on my tongue. Your thoughts define me. There inside me, you're my reality. Mm. Is our Abba today intimately connected to us? Let's sing together. And Abba.
You're more real than the ground I'm standing on. I believe we are in desperate need, uh, not just as a people, as the point, as a church, but we are in, the world is, is in desperate need of encountering a risen Christ. We've been walking out of this, the mystery of Easter, the great miracle that Jesus is not dead, he's alive. And what I believe, and what I'm desperate, and my prayer has been all week for you to experience, maybe for the first time today, maybe for the first time in a long time today for you, that Jesus is not just alive in the world, not just alive in heaven, he is alive in you. In you, because the miracle, the resurrection does not start or not, not stop when Jesus roamed the earth in his physical presence and went up to heaven. Sometimes we think, oh, he just put a button on it and he off he went to heaven. But there was more to come because God desires to reside in a more intimate way, way with you even than physically. Did you know that? That this moment, the disciples locked in the upper room for fear that what they experienced, that Jesus was alive. A lot of times they're, they were living in the place that we often do. We celebrate, man, Jesus is alive, but then he's gone. Where did he go? <laughs> and in, in that space and place of wondering and fear, living in the place that we so often do, disconnected from the reality that Jesus is alive and he didn't leave, but he intends to reside with you in an even more intimate way than face to face. He wants to move into your life today through his spirit in us. And that is truth today. Because presence is where God is leading us. As we change our perspective, we realign our posture in worship to become true worshipers, that we experience the fruit of that movement. And I love this about our relationship with God because we fear that if, if faith isn't for me, then what is it for? <laughs> And when God invites us to surrender and sacrifice and lay down our wants, needs, and preferences, in the back of our human hearts and minds, it says, well, God, yeah, but that's all good and fine, but I still need you to deal with all this mess in my life. But when we are obedient and we move or change our perspective, we surrender and change our posture towards him, a deep fulfillment comes because we experience the reality of his presence like never before, because our eyes are on him and just like he spoke into those disciples today, now 2,000 years later, he's still entering in because the great mystery of our faith is that God is present presently. <laughs> right now, today, on Sunday morning here at The Point. And he's present here in person. Hey, y'all watching online, he's present with you. He's present all over the world, longing for us to encounter the reality that he is with us. Paul is trying to wake the ancient Corinthians up, just like he's trying to wake us up today in the scriptures as they continue to speak into us these spiritual rhythms that God uses to invade our lives. Do you not know? And I want you to hear this from the Apostle Paul. He's not talking to the ancient Christians anymore. He's speaking to you in 2023. He says to you, do you not know today that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. And a temple is this image for the ancient Jew, their minds would have been immediately to the Holy of Holies, the physical place where God's spirit resided. And it broke out of that temple and entered into yours and mine. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, the very presence of the risen Christ, who is in you, whom you have received from God. He has given it to you. You are not your own. Did you not know that? You were bought with a price. The blood of Christ inviting you into this divine union, the great mystery of our faith, that he is present presently. I want to invite you, as we sing this last song, we're going to stand on our feet for this one. And if, you're, if your posture is still where your posture is, that's fine too. But I want to invite you. We are going to celebrate that God is present here. And my prayer all week has been that we would move out of the obligation and routine of what worship has often become in our faith. And instead we would encounter the living presence of Jesus here in our midst. Because friends, that changes everything. He changes everything. And if you're here today with brokenness and you're longing for some sort of change in your life, 
the answer is not the things that you think God needs to do for you. The answer is the presence of Jesus in your life. If you're here with a broken relationship or a desperate situation, maybe you're here with apathy and you're just confused and distant and you don't know what this faith thing is all about. The thing you're missing is presence. The risen Christ invading your heart today. I want to invite you. Maybe, maybe you haven't connected with Jesus at all, and this is your first time. You're watching online, and you're having this revealing that Jesus is your answer today. Not the routines and things that we make faith all about, but Jesus is your answer today, and you want today to be the first time to begin a journey with him. Take it. Say, Jesus, I want to walk towards you. Invade my soul today as we celebrate. God, thank you for your spirit invading us today in our hearts, our bodies, living spaces for you to reside and transform us and make us new. May our worship be true and proper. God, as we finish up our time and our experience today, we pray we want to give you full reign uh, that you would do what you will today in our midst.
each and every day. Let us become more aware of your real presence, God. And let us experience the glory of your today that we could make a move, Lord, uh, to somewhere new with you. Uh, I pray you would continue to help us to change our perspective, to realign our posture, God, and to experience your presence, because that is what worship is all about. And you desperately long, I believe, God, to invade our moments and minutes in our everyday. May we, God, experience that change from being just Sunday worshipers for us to being true and proper worshipers, offering ourselves as living sacrifices, changing our posture towards you, seeing you for your, all your goodness and mercy and love every moment and minute of the week, Lord, that we might experience your presence beyond Sunday. We're grateful for that. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We, we are... Um, very passionate uh, as we enter into bringing the weekly three to the surface because following Jesus is really what the point is. <laughs> we want to continue to point one another towards who Jesus is and what he's doing in the midst of your life. And the most important time for that journey for you is, I want, and I hate to break it to you, but it's not on Sunday mornings for an hour. The most important time for you, as you engage with, experience, change your posture, perspective, come closer to Jesus is the moments and minutes outside of this time. So when you leave this place, we want to be a, a, a church, a community that points one another in all of those moments towards what it means to be a true worshiper. And so the weekly three is all about that. It's a constant reminder for us throughout the week that we are called to be worshipers in our everyday lives. And we want to live that out. And our challenge for you is to this week, maybe be paying attention to what does it mean for you to be a true worshiper as you leave this place throughout the week, to live it out. And, and the, so the question becomes, how do we do that? How do we, how do we live it out? I don't have a guitar. I can't sing a lick. I don't know what the thing is. But what we've learned today is that worship is more than just singing and all the things that we oftentimes make it. The worship you've experienced today, prayer, You've experienced the spiritual rhythm of prayer, confession. You've experienced the spiritual rhythm of reading the scriptures. You've experienced the spiritual rhythm of, of, of proclaiming who God is through his word, right? Through our communal worship together, through relationship together, you've experienced the reality that God is present. So the weekly three, we want to give you some tools. And one way to do that is on the app. If you don't have the app, today is your morning to get it. If you don't know how apps work, there's somebody next to you. Look next to you. The person next to you can help you make the app work. <laughs> Go to your um, app store and search Go to the Point. That's the important thing. It could be a little confusing, but search Go to the Point and you'll see our little logo there. And on the app, we have, we're redesigning the app to be focused on the weekly three. 
to give you resources to be journeying towards Jesus. So on the app, it's going to go back one screen, Sam. It's going to look like the screen on the right there. It's just going to say the weekly three, what is it? It'll have reminders for what it is and then worship. Um, and when you click on that tab, you go to the next screen and you'll see all kinds of resources there from the Chronicle, worship services, the uh, link to the Bible, the parent queue for your family time in the word of God together as you learn to be true worshipers for him. We want to leave you with resources to help you become who God has called you to become. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, take us from this place now to become and live into what it means to be true worshipers. May you help us, lead us, guide us, God, in this weekly three to experience spiritual rhythm and worshiping together. We're grateful, Lord, for you calling us to be like you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in his power and peace this week. Amen.